Welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. I'm Lydra, and let's dive right in. So between sessions, I did do just a little bit of inventory management that I want to go over. So I gave Lydra this helm here uh, that increases her resolve and perception. Uh, this is a helm that we found in the Temple of Aethys. And then I also went ahead and changed out her melee weapon to a dagger because it has a fast speed and that will allow her to switch between casting spells and attacking very quickly should the need arise. Uh, we also got her this fine wand, so previously she'd been using just a basic wand, but now she has a fine one. And then for Aloth, we basically kept everything the same, I just made sure he had a couple potions and traps and things. Adair, we gave him the Guan Share, which is this really exciting new weapon we have. Uh, so it's a flail that will convert some of his grazes to hits, and then also it's going to uh, drain health from the enemy, which should be really useful given that he's our tank. And then I also gave him this fine Arbalist, which is a very, very slow, heavy-hitting ranged weapon on the basis that uh, if he's attacking with a ranged weapon, it's because he's drawing an enemy into close combat, since... The whole point is that he's keeping the close combat off the rest of our characters. And then for Durance, we really didn't make any changes, just because we didn't have enough good gear to make anything interesting happen here. Um, and then the last thing I want to touch on is that I did add all of the same spells to both Lydra and Aloth's spell lists, and I finally gave Aloth Slicken. We will no longer be competing over what Lydra needs to do because both of our casters can now cast our favorite spell. All right, so I think the next thing we're gonna do is assist on the quest to take care of Lord Raedric. Lord Raedric is the local leader. He has been doing some stuff that has been incredibly cruel, uh, murdering a lot of his people. It is time that we helped the locals out with that. So we're going to travel to Eastern Wood, and let's see, let's go ahead and stealth right away because we don't want to miss anything or get caught by surprise. Let's just see what that leads to. The Black Meadow, great. Okay. Now let's take a look at this. Warding symbols as red and rough as scabs have been carved into some of the trees. Interesting. Okay, so it's just a deer that spotted us, no big deal. Gotta grab those mushrooms. Perfect. I need to look into uh, what kind of recipes I can make with all of these reagents I've found. Okay, look. Okay, so we've got a wicked. Looks like a few of them. Um, so I think we're just going to start off basic. We're going to assume that this fight will not be too hard. So Aloth and Lydra will both lay down some arcanes while Edder tanks. Perfect. Yeah, these guys are going down fast. Uh, we'll go ahead and lay down the rest of our arcanes, just because we can. Okay, great. And now we can all attack this one, coming back up. Great, okay. Right back into stealth. I'm going to speed this up for you guys, so you don't have to watch me run halfway to Hell and Gone for no reason. And let's take a look at our map and see how we're doing. Okay, so we made it all the way to the one side. So we're just going to sweep this whole thing. These woods are pretty creepy, huh? Like, you kind of half expect there to be like a witch's cottage in here somewhere. Ooh, some golden celery. Great. Ah, uh, you know what? There are wits. <laughs> Witches. We're just gonna climb up this hill and enter what I believe is a cemetery. Uh, yeah, perfect. Okay, so we've got a skeleton here. Um, my recollection is that they have bows and arrows, so we're gonna need to close. Ooh, he's got a sword. Okay, perfect. All right, just the one. There's gotta be more. Perfect, okay. Um, we're gonna have Durance come up here because Lydra's health is very low. And then let's go ahead and lay down those arcanes as normal. Perfect. Okay, and then let's go ahead and have um, Adair come up on the last one. Ooh, now we can all fight the last one. That was pretty easy. Just gotta grab the loot real fast. And let's take a look at some of these. Uh, so these are the memorials that the Kickstarter backers for this game put in. 
Here lies Ray. It was just not his day. And please, no necromancy. Let him rot in peace. Seriously, he really hates necromancers. Really. <laughs> Wanderer of many worlds. Poet of the Obsidian Order. A famous poet of old whose writings were lost all but for a line which now marks his memorial. One drop of blood ill spent. Yeah, I love that they did this. Like, I, um... Here's to the fallen of sorcerer's place, Sir Bell a paladin with sword and mace. Takara, twas turnips, put a smile on his face. Kittrix for tech help was first on the case. Each one now gone, but not without trace. Like, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, sorcerer's palace, man. Ooh. This game just, like, has so much nostalgia for me, uh, because... I played these games constantly when I was a kid. I was all about the top-down RPG. Mmm, we just got some cool loot. Uh, let's take a quick second and check out what this will do. Ooh, plus two to perception. That's really nice. Um, you know, I actually like that more than the helm. And then we'll give Adair the helmet. Uh, the helmet, the resolve will help protect him against getting charmed and I don't want my fighter to suddenly turn around and start attacking my casters <laughs> looks like uh, this screen's going to be a quick one let's go ahead and just rush in these guys are easy uh, let's put on an arcane into another one. And another. And another. Perfect. All right. And let's go ahead and stealth just to make sure we don't miss anything. Okay, spiders. These might prove to be a little bit more challenging. I'm going to make sure that Adair is on top of this large one over here. And he can do a knockdown on that. We'll go ahead and lay down our arcanes, as always. All right. One more knockdowns. I'm gonna have uh, a dare knock down the small one. Perfect. Okay, and now we can all attack the little one. All right then. Hmm. Looks like these spiders managed to attack someone. Uh, well, they attacked me, but kill someone. The other guy wasn't so lucky. All right, okay, well, we got some stuff. Uh, Durant's has taken a little bit more of a beating than I'd hoped. Let's take a look. Okay, so we're just going to, like, clear out the top and then come right down the center of the road. Great, okay, nothing up there. Okay, just stealth, make sure we're not missing anything. Mm-hmm. All right. Time to move forward. Lord Redrick, we are going to do something about what you've been doing. All right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do something a little bit uh, different here. I want to be able to show you guys the three different methods for getting into the castle. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the first option and then I'm going to restart the game and show you the second option and then restart the game again and we're going to go with the one that I'm going to actually play with. Uh, so the first option for entering the castle is right up here on the left side of the screen. You can see this is the map here and we are going to climb this uh, ivy. So we get this little storylet that says, The castle's bell tower rises up over the walls before you. Thick vines have grown over the outer wall, weaving over and between the stones. The vines span nearly the full height of the wall, curling over the parapets. We'll examine the wall. 
The overgrown vines look fairly sturdy, though it is unclear whether they would bear a person's weight. Far above, you notice that a section of the parapets has fallen away, presenting a gap in the defenses. Jump to reach the vines. You get a running start on the bank of the moat and leap, aiming for some of the thicker vines. Your handhold sways, and there is an ominous crack above you, but the vines hold. The tower looms above you. Climb up the vines. The climb up the keep wall is long and wearying, fatiguing some in your party. But in time, the top of the wall comes within reach, and you are able to pull yourself up and over. Uh, so in this situation, we end up at the top of the tower. Uh, there's, you know, random loot up here. And there's going to be guards across the parapets as we enter. This is one of the shortest ways through the dungeon. But we're going to go ahead and rewind and do something different. All right, guys. So let's check out the next method for entering the dungeon. Uh, so we can go ahead and actually just enter right through the front gates. The guard fixes a glower on you. You have no business here. Lord Raedric is not permitting any visitors, merchants, or traveling entertainers. He sneers. Best turn right around. Okay, so I can choose to speak with them, attack them, or just tell them I'm leaving. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just start with diplomacy. We'll see what that gets us. I'm here to see Raedric. Step aside. The guard snorts. Are you hard of hearing? He draws his sword. You've got one more chance to turn around. The guards inside won't be half so gentle. The guard fixes a glower on you. You have no business here. Yeah, so he's basically sticking to his story. We now have the opportunity to approach this with a resolve 15, uh, which I do not have. So we're going to go ahead and just attack him. All right, so as you can see, they're not especially difficult to fight. And we have successfully eliminated the obstacle. We can enter the castle through the front doors. Uh, so as we enter through this way, um, there'll just be more guards to attack and we'll be able to start exploring the castle from there. All right, so welcome back. We're going to go ahead and enter the castle my favorite way, which is through the moat. So this method is the one that uh, Kolsk told us about. Uh, he suggested that we might be able to enter through the sewers. Uh, he did warn us that the sewers might have been blocked, uh, but we did go ahead and bring a pry bar and some masonry tools and a bunch of different items that should definitely help us to get through. So we're going to move over these rocks here and then you can see that there is a door available. Set into the base of the keep's outer wall, a sewer gate spills murky, foul-smelling wastewater into the keep's surrounding moat. Slick, mossy stones form a precarious bridge across the murky water. Ahead, the iron bars of the sewer grate block passage. The bars are coated with rust, and several appear bent or sit at strange angles. They may have been weakened enough that you can bend them, given the means. Alright, so we are going to just see if anybody's strong enough to bend the bars without help. You think that someone of sufficient strength could bend some of the more worn bars allowing passage. Who will make the attempt? Um, I'm going to make the attempt. We'll just see. You step forward to grip two of the iron bars. Leaning back, you pull as hard as you can. Despite your best efforts, however, the iron holds fast. All right, let's go ahead and just cut to the chase. I'm going to use a pry bar to bend the iron bars. The constant rush of foul water against the grate makes maneuvering difficult, but you manage to place a pry bar between two of the more heavily rusted bars and give it a heavy push. Uh, you've lost an item, the pry bar. With a groan, one of the iron bars begins to give. You heave, and at last the bar snaps free of its base with a crunch. Beyond the broken grate, a dark passage leads further into the keep. Murky water flows through it in a continuous stream. All right, swim through. You take a deep breath to forestall the acrid stench around you and slip forward into the flooded tunnel. 
the walls soon fade from view as you plunge into a foreboding darkness. As you swim on, light begins to filter through the murky water ahead of you. You press on, seeking out the source, until you find yourself standing beneath a circular gap in the tunnel, and a way out. So, we have made it into the sewers. It's time to very carefully not get caught until the time of our own choosing. Uh, so let's go ahead and pick the lock on this door and see what's behind it. All right. Okay, so it's just some gold, nothing special. It's always that moment right before you open a chest where you're like, oh, maybe there's something really good in there or an important secret note. Okay, so we have a trap. Luckily, we have Aloth. Perfect. Okay, and so we've got uh, some monsters to fight. Let's go ahead and actually just attack this one. Um, so we're going to make sure that Adair gets right up in front. Perfect. And then... Aloth and Lydra will be able to lay down some good arcanes now that they're all bunched up in that doorway. Perfect. And Adair can move forward a little bit. Perfect. And let's go ahead and lay down another two arcanes. And then Aloth will take advantage of his blast skills. All right. So I think these guys are going to go down without too much fuss. But they're just going to take a little bit. We just got a fair amount of chopping to do. Perfect. All right. There we go. Uh, let's get back to stealth right away. We definitely want to be looking for traps and treasure and also not get caught by monsters. Uh, so it looks like this is going to lead us back the way we came. So I think we're going to want to head back up these stairs. And let's come through here. And just see what we can find. Okay, oh, we've got a whole trap right here. Perfect. I am not regretting keeping high perception and a very skilled mechanic on my team. Okay, so we gotta get this ooze down because it is doing some major damage. Uh, Aloth definitely does not have that kind of health in him. Uh, let's check out this room down here first. Very slowly. Make sure we have plenty of time to spot any traps. Ooh, here we go. Okay. So, ooh, we have some cool boots. Mm. Uh, property sturdy. Let's take a look. What does the sturdy property do? Defense against prone attacks. Okay, so this is definitely something we want for Adair. Uh, because no as our frontline fighter, he's the one most at risk. Uh, so we just got some goods. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip this ladder for now. I'm not 100% sure where it goes. But I do know that I want to clear out this whole level before we go anywhere. And let's lay down these arcanes, as always. Oh, is I think these oozes actually might be immune to those arcanes. I'd never realized that before. Uh, I gotta pay a little more attention sometimes. <laughs> okay, so we have a trap here in the center. Uh, let's see if Aloth can sneak up and get it without alerting the sure, sure, sure. revenant. Perfect. Okay, um, let's sc scoot into this hallway. Ooh! Oh dear, there's another trap. Okay, um, well, we know exactly where that trap is, so I'm going to see if Lydra can run up here and maybe Aloth, ooh, he cannot do the trap while the fight is happening. 
And it looks like that Revenant might be coming to join us, unfortunately. So we're just going to have to all go in, very carefully avoiding the spot that we know the trap is. Uh, and we'll have Durance come and take the backside. Um, and I'm going to lay down an arcane over here. Just to ensure that... Uh, Durance is free from his fight as quickly as possible. All right, now everybody can come attack views. Please don't step on the trap, Durance. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to take care of that trap. Oh, it looks like it's gone. No problem. I don't see it anymore. Did I accidentally trigger it? Hmm. I wonder what it did. Okay, well, we'll just be on the lookout for it on the way back, just in case. Uh, more oozes. Okay. Um, we'll put Leitra to the back again. Uh, we gotta just move her up in our party formation. Like, this is a problem. There we go. Okay. So, we are going to try Arcane Assault one more time, and we're just gonna see if it has any effect. Okay, yeah, it looks like that's actually not a thing. Uh, we do have a fair number of oozes. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to spend any spells so early in this dungeon. Uh, we're just going to see what we can do for the moment. Without them, this might be a mistake. Uh, and Durant's actually, we don't tend to use a lot of Durant's spells. So I am going to go ahead and use Durant's spell on Adair. Okay, so we've got one ooze down. Uh, I think if everybody focuses on this next one, it should go down much more quickly. Hmm... Okay, it's definitely spell time. Um, Lydra is going to cast a... Hmm, not that. Um, she'll cast a Combusting Wounds. And then we're going to have Aloth just minor missiles, this one in the back, so it has some damage to Combust. And then... Let's... Have Vidra attack the one just behind her. And Aleth is going to do another uh, minor missiles, this time on the one further in the back. Because we might want to do some more combusting wounds over here. Just give that a shot. I don't know if knockdown works on these guys. It doesn't seem like it would, you know? They're just oozes. Uh, try Chill Fog. That's a pretty nice big range. I think I can maybe get them all? It's a little hard to see. Okay, we gotta wait until that spell goes off uh, to bring Adair and Durance too close. Ooh, Adair is in a world of hurt. Um, No, I think they might actually be taking damage from the spell. That was a huge mistake, uh, you guys. <laughs> that went very badly. Um, hopefully there will be plenty of camping supplies throughout this dungeon. Alright, let's take a look. Oh, just a gem. So boring. All right, so we're stealthing. We're checking for the trap. It's not coming up. I don't know what happened there. Okay, so we definitely can't survive a big fight, but I do think we might 
uh, be able to get into a much smaller one in this area. So we're just going to move forward very carefully. Uh, like this one Revenant we could definitely fight. So I'm going to go ahead and have everybody like sneak attack it, if possible. Okay, there's two of them, but that's not that big of a deal. Ooh, okay, much bigger fight than anticipated. Uh, but that's fine, that's fine. And we'll have uh, Eder immediately uh, knock down, if possible. And we'll lay down some of these blasts. Just arcane these guys down. Okay, and then we can again do a knockdown. Make sure everyone is participating. Yeah. Gotta pull your own weight, you guys. Okay. Oh, and Adair has one more knockdown, so we'll definitely use that. Perfect. Okay. See, this is what you get when you don't when you push yourself just a little bit. We didn't need to sleep. I don't think we even used any real spells just then. It's a little dangerous, but you know, so what? We're gonna come around this side and just check. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now everything is unlocked. Uh, nobody will be confused that somebody is sniffing around their dungeon. Yes. Okay, this is Kolsk Friend, I think. Giacco. This young man's face is badly bruised and his gaunt form is covered in a thrare... This young man's face is badly bruised and his gaunt form is covered in a threadbare shirt. He watches you shivering with a measure of hope in his eyes. I... I don't know who you are, but will you help me? Adair looks pained. Our noble lord at work. Giacco. He gazes nervously past you at the open cell door. I don't think I could fight my way out. All right, I think we're going to say this place is still dangerous. Wait here for now. Giacco nods hurriedly, swallowing. Of course, I'll stay here until you give the word. All right, then. So we just need to kill a bunch more creatures. Let's get this skeleton. Uh, we'll have Adair open with a knockdown, obviously. Hopefully it'll take. And then we'll have Iloth and Lydra. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, that went real well. And let's see what's behind door number one. <sighs> Okay, um, so we've got a revenant. Um, and some kind of ghoul. I think that might actually be a boss fight, so I'm going to leave it for a minute. Oop, trap, trap, trap. Mm. Good work, Aloth. Let's get this other one. Perfect. All right. What's over here? Oh, camping supplies. Excellent. Okay. That's exactly what we need. Um, just random loot. Mm -hmm. Every time something's locked, I'm so hopeful that it's going to be something really good. Oh, and it's always so disappointing when it's not. Alright, well let's go ahead and uh, rest, actually. Because uh, things are tough. And Adair definitely doesn't need a spirit uh, racial accuracy bonus anymore. So we're going to go ahead and say just a basic damage reduction is good for him. All right, let's check out this room. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll bring Lydra back. Mm -hmm. 
And then Lydra and Aloth can both lay down their arcanes. Right here. Perfect. And Adair will start off with a... Ooh, not on that one, because that one's almost dead. Uh, we'll knock down the ghoul. And lay down another arcane. And Aloth can lay down his arcane here. And Lydra can start attacking this ghoul. And we're making some real good progress here. Let's go ahead and just Radiance. And knock down this one. Perfect. Alright, maybe I didn't need to rest. Mm -hmm. What is this green liquid? The tank is warm to the touch. The glass vibrates with the bubbling fluid inside. Blood and flux of dried flesh and crust the restraints. Ooh, nasty. Uh, looks like a place for an animancer. Probably experimenting on prisoners. Let's take a look at the map, just get a sense of where we're going. So we have a couple hallways up here. And then this room. Looks like it's something. Yep. All right. Well, boss fight. Here it is, I think. Asira, a woman caught mid-step across the room, turns her head to face you. Long curls of black hair frame her face, one side of which is flecked with some green liquid. The gaze she sets upon you holds an eerie intensity. More interruptions? The woman sits down the book she holds, smiling faintly. What an interesting time we've been having of late. So many uninvited guests. I suppose I have you to thank for all the damage to my work. It took time to get those people back on their feet, you know. Osira frowns. What is it you're doing here? Okay, um, I'm going to say, oh, interesting. I could tell her that Lord Redrick sent me, uh, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to say, were those yours? I prefer cats myself. I have one of those as well. Osiris studies you, mouth crooking upwards in a small smile. You're one of Kalsk's little rebels, I take it. Come to fulfill his ambitions? Put an end to his departed allies? No matter. What concerns me is the curse upon Gilded Vale's people. I am on the cusp of a great discovery. It is not Kosk who underrines me. She eyes you. You might have chosen more powerful allies. What caused Wade Wynn's legacy? It isn't the superstitions of senile old men, I can tell you that. Osiris snorts. The legacy is an affliction of the soul, and I have dedicated my life alongside my peers to understanding the fabric of souls, the essence of life. With any luck, she'll hang on that tree alongside her peers, too. Elas' voice is cold. I consider myself the foremost student of Pangram's famed theorems. It wasn't by chance that I was called here to assist in determining the true cause of this blight. This curse is not a parting gift from the scattered god, nor a punishment for petty sins. It must be a localized effort, something which strips the soul from a body, as the Beowax are known to do. Adair, don't tell my town that. They might get real embarrassed about trying to have me hanged. I have detected, even so, lingering traces of essence upon the bodies of so-called hollowborn. This suggests that the soul itself has not been wholly destroyed. It remains, I think, intact, somewhere. And so it can be retrieved, and sutured, if you will, back into its mortal flesh. Why haven't you been able to find a cure yet? Osiris' expression goes cold. It's that fool priest, Nedmar, the Berethian, she sneers. That old man has woven a tidy little tapestry of lies and fables. Lord Redrick is a pious man, and Nedmar holds power over him, especially now, after this business with Ygrid, as if that hollow-born child was my doing. In any case, my efforts are increasingly hobbled by ignorance. The priest has focused Lord Redrick's attention upon the ruins of the scattered god's temple. If it is consecrated anew, rededicated to Barath, then the curse will be lifted. 
Osira rolls her eyes. Grajic believes him, of course. In any case, he has supplied a vast amount of gold towards the effort. You will note that I am bereft of such generous support. She gestures to her lab with a sweep of her arm. I am left to scrounge for answers in these dismal conditions. I'm just going to check what she would consider help to be. Could I help somehow? Osira angles a curious look your way. An interesting proposal. I certainly can't leave you threatening Lord Raedrick's life. How would I continue my research if you are gone? She frowns. Still, perhaps we need not be enemies. If your true purpose is indeed, as Kulz claims, to help Gilded Vale, then we are of one mind, and you may well be of use to me. I stand at the very brink of revelation, but Nedmer's interference has gone too far. What do you want me to do? I want you to deal with the High Priest, of course. With him gone, Radric will have nobody to distract him. We can focus our efforts upon resolving this crisis, and we'll have the resources to do so. Kill him, and in return I will give you the means to speak with Radric, a secret way by which you can avoid the guards. Osira smiles crookedly. They are not as patient as I, you see, nor do they ask as many questions before attacking. She raises a finger. All this with the condition that you do not harm Lord Radric. Alas speaks between his teeth. I do hope you're not considering a deal with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> We're going to attack her because uh, we want to. Osiris' smile fades swiftly. Very well. If it's a battle you long for, I'm happy to indulge you. Perhaps Lord Raedric will show me greater favor if I bring him your corpse as well. Okay, so we're in the thick of it. Um, let's see. We are going to start by having Adair move up and Durance move out. And uh, we can't Spirit Shield just yet. Uh, but I could... Fireball. This gets a little bit dangerous because it's going to bounce, but let's go ahead and give it a shot. Um, we're going to be very careful about how we position people. And uh, let's see, how big is... Okay, we want people a little closer before we slicken them. So we'll go ahead and uh, Necrotic Lance. <laughs> Okay, and now we're going to immediately make a Consecrated Ground. And Adair can move out here. And now that we've got a little bit of a tighter group, we should be able to uh, slick in effectively. Here we go. Okay, and we're going to Radiance, and I think Slick in the other side of the room. Or actually, I'm going to go ahead and just um, quickly try to get these guys down, because we're in a decent amount of trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then Lydra is going to go ahead and Second Wind... And Adair can just do a knockdown again. And then Aloth is going to go ahead and do another arcane. <gasps> oh no, Lydra's down! Okay, so that's not good. Um, Alright, so Adair is going to do a... Uh, actually, Adair's going to run up to Osira and do a knockdown on her, if at all possible. And then he's going to do an iconic projection just to try to do damage and healing at the same time while Adair heals himself. 
Okay, great. So we've got a Syra down. That's fantastic. Uh, this one's not doing the most damage, I don't think, but it is doing some. So we're going to take it out since it's going to be fast and slow. Oops. Okay, so the Flesh Contract grabbed us. So we're going to have um, Durant's come around and take care of the Skeletal Wizard, hopefully. Oh no, Durant's. Uh, let's see if he can halt it. I think... Oof. Okay. Well, it's all on you, Adair. I'm going to just disengage. I'm going to get this wizard. The wizard's definitely the primary threat right now. Uh, and luckily, Adair does still have um, his second chance armor on, which will give him one knockdown. And... Like, he'll be able to fall unconscious and come back up. And he has his Guan share, so he's soaking in some health. So I actually think he might make this fight. Uh, especially because we gave him that potion of regeneration. So at this point, we just gotta... Uh, wait it out. Uh, pray for the best. Okay, so he's regaining health right now. Very slowly. Uh, but the flesh construct is still losing health. So we're going to make this. It's going to be... I handled that fight very poorly, but it doesn't matter. Because we're going to win. Yeah. Good work, Adair. Okay. So we got a new spell book. Hopefully she has something good in it. Oh, secret, huh? Okay, secret door is opened now. Oh, let's just grab all her stuff. And we're quickly going to backtrack and go grab those camping supplies, because uh, we definitely need to camp pretty much ASAP. We've got some penalties on everybody. Okay, so this is a secret uh, pathway. I think that's probably the secret that she was telling us about for getting to Lord Raedric quickly. Um, I think we'll have to make a choice about if that's how we want to handle this dungeon or not. Um, I want to release this guy, so first I want to check out the other paths out of the dungeon and make sure that they're safe to move through. Uh, so that means we have to check out what's here to this kind of tomb area yet. Okay, yeah, we definitely have a goal. Uh, just try to draw them into the doorway, I guess. Um, and we're going to put Adair up front. And we're not going to have any shame about using up our spells because we're going to need to rest pretty soon anyway. Uh, I'm going to do a chill fog right here. Oh no, I let them through. Shoot. Okay. Well, at least most of them fell from the slicken. So let's go ahead and just have um, Durance attack them over here. All right. And I'm going to have Aloth continue with his arcane while I go ahead and use my Grimoire Slam. Shoot. Durance is down. Okay. Corrosive Siphon. Ah, Leadra's down too. All right. Things are getting real dirty. All right, let's see. Uh, we'll fan these flames. There's nobody in the way. I'll get this gall down. Let's get this gall behind Aloth. Okay, Aloth, you gotta, you gotta heal. I really need you to heal, buddy. Uh, let's see. Can he corrosive? That air is gonna try to knock down. Okay, and let's just see if we can use a missiles. No, okay. Whew. Well, Adair's pretty tough, so I think he'll be able to handle it. It's just one gall, you know? He's just chopping away at it. Whew. Okay, well, everyone is incredibly badly injured. Uh, we do have the two camping supplies, though, so I think it's okay. Uh, let's just take care of this room. Ooh, interesting. Just fine armor. Nothing super special, I guess. Let's go ahead and disarm. Perfect. Uh, so it doesn't look like there's anything super great in here. Just some minor loot. And I guess we'll just have Lydra peek inside. If there's just like one creature, it's like not so hard. We could probably get it down before it would do any damage to anybody. Ooh, that one requires a special key. Okay. Well, I think we can go back to our friend and report that uh, 
we have successfully cleared the way for him. All right, so he's going to say, is it safe? And I'm going to say, you're free. Make a run for it. Thank you, stranger. I have to get back to the fork. But first, some food and rest, I think. He hesitates. If you would dare the upper floors, please tell Nedmar I live yet. Tell him, tell him I still have the carving he gave me of the pale knight. That should convince him, and perhaps he can help you somehow. Great. Okay. Good luck, and may the gods keep you safe. Now we can move onwards. Um, I am going to go ahead and just take a peek through this door. All right, so we're in a kitchen. Uh, hopefully there'll be some good cooking ingredients in here. And so this actually does look like it leads... Okay, yeah, so I remember this. So this leads out into the ground floor, and I actually want to do a little bit more of a surgical strike. So we're going to go ahead and use uh, the method that the boss suggested to us, where we would go talk to Nedmar. We are going to try to convince him to help us. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a quick rest. We are now somewhere very interesting. Much nicer area than the dungeon we were in before. Ooh, some more boots. Uh, boots of evasion. Reflex bonus. Uh, yeah, we'll not think about this too hard, but we're going to go ahead and just pop these on Lydra. I don't want to spend my time on the inter inventory management right now. Oh my, okay. So it looks like this might be uh, Radric's wife. All right, we've got a ring. Let's just take a quick look at what that ring does. A ring of searing flames. Ooh, we can cast um, combusting wounds with that. We're going to give this to Durance uh, because that will be very helpful for him. Blood still wet runs from the woman's slit throat soaking into the sheets below oh my god so it looks like he's killed his own wife i guess we knew that he was going to do that blackened pages curl in the fire a leather cover embossed with a rising sun and three stars is barely visible through the flames okay this is um lord redrick <laughs> this is our boss right here i'm just gonna scout the whole room all right, well, let's do it. Um, I'm gonna take a quick moment to make sure everybody has some like good potions before we get involved. Too much. Uh, let's see. Uh, beer will increase our damage reduction, so we might as well give that to somebody. Uh, we'll just put it in Leech's inventory. Uh, Spirit Shield is really nice. Let's go ahead and Get a spirit shield potion here and one for Alaf. Uh, what is this? Potion of Wizard's Double. Uh, we'll skip that for now. We'll get uh, Durant's some of these health potions. And the milk will increase my max endurance and constitution. I definitely want that. Uh... Plus one constitution, sure, why not? Just to be really safe. Okay, I think I think that's enough. We'll just go with this. Uh, we'll do a quick save. And approach. Radric, let her approach. Flanked by a host of guards, all of whom regard you with mute hostility, Lord Radric VII observes you from his throne. Clad in ornate plate, his eyes have a hollow quality, and there's a pallor to the man's God. gaunt face that leaves his features showing stark against his dark and unkempt hair. There is a dagger discarded upon one stone arm of the throne. A thin, crimson rivulet worms its way down from the blade and past Radric's fingers, even as he leans forward to regard you with a piercing gaze. Adair thought he'd be better looking, even with all the inbreeding. Though his face is calm, you notice Adair's hand straying towards his weapon, as though with a mind of its own. It is unlike Kolsch to hire mercenaries, or foreigners for that matter, and you are not one of mine. 
so I cannot accuse you of treason. His fingers close loosely around the pommel of the dagger, as if to ascertain if it is still there, and then flinch away. You've come far closer than his people ever did. Radric looks to his guards, who shuffle nervously. Much too close, he looks back to you. A quiet infiltration, and done more skillfully than Kolsch could ever manage. I did not expect it. What has my cousin promised you? Some grand reward? If he had any resources to his name, he would not covet mine. And if he had any honor in him, he would not have tried this here, now, when I have lost so much. Kolsch is your cousin? Oh, yes. We are kin, he and I. He was raised within these walls, in fact, privy to all the privileges our family had to offer. But a greedy man always hungers after more than he receives, however bountiful. I was eldest, heir to the stewardship of our lands, and he was not. The legacy brought chaos with it, panic and despair. Kolsch took advantage of that chaos, creating division in our ranks, luring loyal men and women to his cause. Good men, good women. Lord Radric's gaze goes distant for a moment, and then he glances at you, and his lip curls. He fled the keep in time, to hole up in the wilds beyond the village, to play at being a commoner and court favor with the people. And while he plays at conqueror, the veil suffers. Families, traitors, all... I do not have enough men to guard the roads and defend us from Kolsk's incursions both. My attention suffers, and so my governance. My family. Radric breathes out through his nose. Nor can I make the effort necessary to bring about an end to this curse if we are beset at all hours by his traitorous plots. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, this is very interesting. So, I'm going to say... I wouldn't talk of honor if I were you. I saw the body upon your bed. Radric's face darkens with sudden fury. Radric's <clears throat> face darkens with sudden fury. You do not know what you speak of. The blasphemies that fell from her lips. The dead things she brought into the world as a result. Gilded Vale's laws hold true for all within my lands. None can be exempt. Egrid received a just sentence, whatever her title or her worth to me. Whatever the cost I bear, you, you speak in ignorance. Just as you have stumbled in ignorance upon my foolish cousin's plots, without understanding what is at stake. Mm hmm Ah, uh, I will say, Gilded Vale has suffered under your rule. It deserves a better leader. Rajik makes a low, huffing noise of disbelief. And you think Kolsk is that leader. What does he understand of what it means to be Thane? He has gathered a meager assembly of illiterate farmers and scavengers to himself, and he sends these in suicidal action against my guards. You are a pawn in Kolsch's designs, and he has kept his motivations from you for a reason. I wonder if you understand what it is you do, or what you might accomplish if you were better informed. You have proven your competence in your way, and had I such an ally, we might together put an end to Gilded Vale's woes. Lift the curse once and for all, and in doing so, return us to a life where such strict measures are not necessary. You really are mad if you think I'd work with you. So be it. May the twinned god take pity upon your splintered soul, and scatter it to the winds. All right, so the fight begins. Um, well, first things first, I'm going to have uh, both of my wizards drink a potion of spirit shields. And we're going to have Durant immediately place a consecrated ground. And Adair will go ahead and run to uh, this paladin and attempt to knock down. And now we're going to go ahead and slick in, as always. And Lidra will go ahead and slick in her side of the room. Let's position that just a little bit better. Right there, I think. Oh no. Okay, Adair, you got to... You gotta stay up. Oh no, Leader's down already. Uh, okay. Uh, what can we do? What can we do? Uh, this fight, honestly, I might have just lost this fight because having your... having a, a character go down so quickly is uh, really bad.
All right, so let's see, what can we do? Uh, we're gonna go ahead and Iconic Project this way. And I'm gonna go ahead and fan these flames. Mmm. Everybody's in just the wrong spot for that to be a good idea. Uh, so we're gonna Corrosive Siphon, actually, just to ensure that uh, Ayloth's able to keep a lot of health going. And we're gonna have uh, Durant heal himself. And we're going to go ahead and knock down, if we can, just to get a little bit going here. And we're going to go ahead and slick in. I want to get as many people as possible. Oh, Durance is down. Okay, yeah, this fight is going to be over real soon. Um, barely anybody's taken any damage, even. But we'll just see it through, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to Corrosive Siphon again, just to be as safe as possible. I'm just trying to get at least one of these guys down, you know? Um, and we'll fan flames again. The trick is not to catch Adair in that. Adair's going to come up again. He's got second chance, it's fine. Um, but he's got to actually successfully stand up, which might be tough. Yep, okay, he's back down. Oh, Aloth. <laughs> You're doomed. You're doomed. Don't you see that? You fool. All right, let's try again. We're going to start by drinking some potions or, you know, some milk and spirits uh, just to ensure that think goes off without a hitch and then we're gonna go ahead and I think position ourselves a little bit more strategically this time uh, so we want our mages to be in the front so that uh, Durant has plenty of time to get up his uh, to get up his concentrated ground and then Adair is gonna be the one who approaches and hopefully draws a lot of the attacks so we're gonna go ahead and speed through this conversation and just make the same conversation choices that we made the first time all right, so here we go. I'm gonna start by laying down a slick in, and the goal is to get it uh, where they will actually be when the slick in goes off. So actually, maybe for Aloth, I'm gonna save that, and I'm gonna start by just casting a necrotic lance on uh, this priest. Oh, he's gonna have to move in order to do that. So instead, um, we'll just do it on this uh, paladin. Now, these paladins are pretty tough, so we definitely want them to go down. Let's just get the fight going. Okay, so now we're going to start that Consecrated Ground. We can have uh, Durance maybe... Uh, sorry, Adair close with the enemy. Um, and I'm going to actually just have him do a second win real fast. And then Lydra is going to immediately Corrosive Siphon. And we'll have Aloth do his own Slicken on this side. And then Durance can go ahead and Radiance, get people some health. Oh shoot. Dara's not doing well. Um, we're going to go ahead and have Durance do this projection. Uh, for now, we'll just lay down one of these. Okay, that's fine. Adair has second chance. He'll get back up. It'll be okay. And we will do, I think, another projection just to try to keep him up. But on some level, a lot of this fight is actually just thinking about how to keep your friends all up. Uh, but now, we're going to go ahead and slick in again, I think. Uh, we don't want a dare to fall, though. Maybe now is not the right time. And we're going to go ahead and start combusting their wounds. I think that favored went down. That's great. I'm going to go ahead and put a missiles on this Archmage. Hopefully it'll just interrupt whatever he's doing. And then we can have... Durance is going to 
combusting as well. And we'll do a necrotic lance on this archmage. I think that I lost in a position now to be able to afford to make that choice. Durance is going to halt this archer so we don't have to think about him. And I'm going to go ahead and slicken again. Um, I don't want to slicken my party members, as always, but sometimes it's tough. Ooh, maybe that slicken wasn't actually timed so well. Um, I'm going to heal Durance. Or, sorry, heal Adair. And then... We'll cross of Siphon. And I'm going to go ahead and just missile this archer, try to get him down so that we don't have to think about him. Adair, I don't want you to die. I think it already gone down once so far, so... Once he gets knocked down, I think that's it for him. I'm just gonna lay down our arcanes. Okay. Well, Adair is down. Uh, we are looking pretty good. Overall, I think this might be all we needed to do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and halt uh, this champion of Barith. And then Durance is going to just run over and attack the archer while I yeah. missile Raedric. He's probably pretty strong. Perfect. I think those missiles took him out. And we're going to go ahead and just try to get this champion down. Okay. Um, I'm out of spells. I do still have one last arcane. Uh, totally out of spells. Okay, actually, you know what? No, I have one more from the ring. And we've just got the one guy left, so I think we can do it. And Grimoire Slam, just move him. Perfect! Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. So, now we have just an insane amount of loot. <laughs> and... Lord Raedric is dead. So I guess now it's time to go see uh, what that means for us. Kolsk. We heard that you had moved against the keep, and yet we have arrived too late. But a moment earlier, and I would have heard his dying breath. No matter. It is done. The tyrant is dead, and our village is free to move into a greater future. Gilded Vale owes you a great debt. I owe you a great debt, and you have accomplished what I could not. Take what rewards you care to from Raedric's vaults. You have earned them twice over. Kolsk looks over the throne room, smiling. There is much to do. We must send word to the Earl, of course. Revoke the cruel laws Raedric has instated. But do not think that we will forget your assistance. You have brought about great change. Take pride. Everyone will remember this moment. Come, men. Clear these bodies from the hall. With that, Kulsk strides eagerly towards the throne. Alright, I think this is a really good place to end it. If you liked this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing so you can join me next time.